Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Drawing with Dinosaur Comics. Today, I have with me fossil preparator from the Perot Museum, Miria Perez. Hello, say, say hello, Miria. <laughs> hello. <laughs> um, yeah, go ahead and introduce yourself if you want to say anything about yourself. Yeah, sure. Hi, guys. I'm Miria, and I am a fossil preparator here in Dallas, Texas. I started my paleontology journey when I was 12 years old. I've always loved dinosaurs and just everything about paleontology when I was like a really really young kid so I just never lost that passion for it I had like fossil fever and I was never cured of it <laughs> I mean that's probably the best fever to have for sure <laughs> I know yeah <laughs> all right so um yeah so um today while we are talking I will be drawing a pretty cool diplocollis yin and yang kind of thing so we'll see how that goes also thank you for following uh, a wobbly wallaby anyway um so miria how did you get into paleo were you always like were you like the weird kid growing up i am still the weird kid <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was always into paleo so my my mom would take me to the houston museum a lot when mm -hmm. i was a kid and I do remember going there maybe four or five years old, uh -huh. having to see the dinosaurs first and last before before we left and before we saw anything else, we had to see the Paleo Hall. Uh -huh. um, yeah. And then when I was 12, I think I was, so like this was a very like pivotal moment in my life when I was 12 because I don't know, I started to have like some more interest and in, um, in other things outside of Paleo and outside of STEM. And so when I went to this event called Dino Days with Bach, Dr. Bacher, the paleontologist, I had brought like my binder full of like dinosaur drawings and asked him, you know, what can I do to be involved in paleontology? And they were like, well, you have to be 14 to be a volunteer. How old are you? And I was like, well, and then he said, well, you have to be 14 to volunteer how old are you and i like didn't get it oh he was he was like <laughs> winking he was like you gotta be 14 you know 14. what i mean <laughs> so the agreement was you know as long as i had my parent or mom my mom usually with me i could go volunteer and so i spent almost every weekend driving out to houston which was about 45 minutes to an hour away from where we lived mm -hmm. and just like the things I got to do with my mentor there, David Temple, who mm -hmm. is the associate creator there. So many good stories. I learned how to do field work and prep and kind of science communication too. They have touch carts out in the hall. So I got to, you know, bring out fossils and casts to tell visitors. Mm -hmm. And it just, I it never left. And it just made me want to do it more. That's super cool. And that's crazy because you got to work with, you know, a legend in the field that was, you know, Robert Backer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and was that intimidating for you? Or did you even know who he was when you first met him? Were you just like, or did you know? I, I did. I did know. Um, and what was super embarrassing, too, is because I, I had started volunteering. I went into the lab. Dr. Backer was there and he was kind of showing me around. And he hands me this Dimetrodon tooth. And it's beautiful. It's got all these little serrations on it. It was a shed tooth. He gives it to me and I drop the thing. <laughs> and we spend like 20 minutes on the floor. I'm like on the floor with this famous paleontologist trying to like pick up the pieces of the fossil I just broke. And uh -huh. he showed me how to build it back. But it was, I'm still like cringing about it. <laughs> I'm just like, did you, did you cry or something? Like I would have broken down in tears if that happened. I think I was I was tearing up. I didn't full on cry, but I felt so bad. I felt so so bad. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. But you know, I my mentor at the, at SMU where I went to school, he has a very similar story with him and his professor about it was a mammal tooth that he broke, and then um, his mentor went back and fixed it up. And was like, you know, this happens in paleontology. We can we have glue. Mm. We can fix it. Can't, it can be fixed. We have glue. Yeah, no, that, okay, that's, yeah, that's crazy. So you, you said you started volu volunteering when you were quote-unquote 14. 
All right. I was 14 twice. Yeah. And what did that <laughs> volunteer work entail? Because there's some, you know, some people in the chat are, are wondering, like, how did that volunteer work go? Like, Sink of Death, um, one of the people in chat is asked, is said, like, he's starting to realize how many volunteering opportunities he's missing because of COVID. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's very true. And a lot of stuff like internships are probably stopped as well. Um, but when I was volunteering, because I was kind of working under the associate curator, David, I got to do some pretty cool stuff. So I got to glue casts together. I got to be a part of the new paleo hall, mm -hmm. um, what it is today, because it didn't used to look, look like a huge football field sized paleo hall. Um, so I got to be a part of cleaning those fossils, fixing up old ones, going in the field. And now there's the Whiteside Museum of Natural Science out there. And before all that, the Houston Museum was digging there. So I was out there digging Diplocalus and Dimetrodon mm -hmm. and Lysopolis and all those fun little weird Permian critters. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's really cool. Um, do you think the Permian is probably is your, your favorite? Is it your favorite era of paleontology that you'd like to study your favorite time period? It's like, it definitely has a, a special place in my heart for sure. But like my favorite, my favorite dinosaur changes all the time. Um, <laughs> the Permian and the Jurassic. <laughs> I know. It's just like the more you find out, I mean, when I first started volunteering, I didn't really know anything about the Permian. I'm like, why would you want to study amphibians and stuff when you can study dinosaurs? But I learned to really mm -hmm. love them and, and grow on them. For sure. So like, what else did like your work in the, um, like just volunteering entail? And do you have like any crazy funny like stories from back then? Oh my gosh. So there are so many, you probably know this, so many characters in paleontology. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I have so many memories of, of being out in the field and we come back and eating at the subway mm -hmm. and Dr. Bacher is just unhinged and he will, <laughs> he will just like, eat off of your plate without any warning. So, <laughs> you know, going in and he'd draw on the napkins at Subway and, and show us the geology and anatomy of different animals we were digging up. Mm -hmm. So I have some of those napkins in here somewhere. Do, do you have it pulled up or not? <laughs> like it'll take you a while to find them? Um, you know what? Actually, I can go get, I can go get one. If that's all right. I know go. exactly where it is. Go run for it. Go. I'll be right, I'll be right yeah. back. All right, she's, she's going to be right back. She's in her, her plain white room. <laughs> All right, and I'm still like, I'm mentally still working on this piece. I don't know how it's going to go, but we shall see. Oh, there she is. Yeah, that she was quick. Yeah, dang. Okay, I'm going to go deep into the vault. Okay, I'll deep, some deep into the Miria vault. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this was yeah i was sporting bangs in a different way but that was me doing micro prep mm -hmm. in the leonardo exhibit there was a dinosaur dinosaur mummy called leonardo brachylophosaurus mm -hmm. and that was the first well that was the exhibit that was there when i started volunteering so i actually got to help pack up those fossils Mm -hmm. And here's a picture of me packing up the Brachylophosaurus called Peanut in my... And I always wore this, like, T-Rex shirt all the time. <laughs> so I got to help with, like... You hella, you, you hella glowed up, I'm just saying. <laughs> I know! <laughs> See, that's what happens when you're, like, the weird kid. There's no other way to go, you know, but to dress up and get... And uh, glow up a little bit. Oh, gosh, mm. you're gonna like this guy. This one, I got my got cheese shirt. This got, is my first thing. Got cheese. <laughs> what are you holding? Um, a bro. <laughs> so, um, this this thing is in College Station for all those a and people. There's a place called Whiskey Bridge. And you can find all kinds of shells and shark teeth if you're lucky. And invertebrate burrows. So I found a bunch of burrows. Mm -hmm. And this is a better, a better picture of one. There's a little burrow in there. That's so cool. I think I still have them, or at least some of them. Well, you you, you got you got to keep them. 
Yeah, so some part, some of those trips you got to keep fossils, depending on the, the land situation. And that's the other thing too, for anybody who wants to go hunt fossils, make sure that you are allowed to, <laughs> allowed to do it. Cause you can get in some serious doo-doo um, if you are not careful and reading up on the land stuff. So in Texas, we've got a couple of fossil parks around DFW. We have mm. Ladonia Fossil Park. And if you're here in July, we'll have to take you there. Um, Ladonia and then there's Sherman where you can find all these little shark teeth. It was a shark nursery back in like the Cretaceous. Mm -hmm. And I actually love going there. And then you can also go to Mineral Wells Fossil Park mm -hmm. and you can find trilobites, like little tiny trilobites. I, I get to keep them? <laughs> I look like I'm petting a horse. <laughs> <laughs> so being a horse girl, you're a hadrosaur girl. That's, yeah. that's so crazy though like the size they are like i have not been to a yeah. museum in a super long time so this is why like i'm kind of excited to like come visit because i want to be able to like look at like this you know the skeletons to scale like since the pandemic i've only been you know using references from like images online so i don't know like the i don't understand the scale in my mind yeah because it's been also the pandemic, so it's not like you can just go into a, a museum. Mm -hmm. For sure. Exactly. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Another thing that you can do um, as a volunteer, so we got to be a part, I got to be a part of setting up the Sugarland Museum. So it's like part of the HMS. Mm -hmm. And my mom and I got to help put up their replica of Stan. And that was the end of it. So we got to help. It was, <laughs> yeah, have you ever played with those toys where it's the t-rex skeleton and you put it together yeah, the wooden ones yeah yeah that's exactly what it was just like scaled right is that the process so like when you guys put together a like replica or like fossil cast right like how difficult i'm assuming it's mainly the same like a jigsaw puzzle but you have cranes and basically a lot of people making sure that you don't drop it and break it into pieces yeah, with the cast, with the all cast mounts at least, it's pretty easy because they're made to kind of lock into place depending on what the skeleton is. Like for that that one in particular, mm -hmm. we had forklifts and it was just like, I wish I had in my office, I have a picture or I have the thing of it, but it like clicks into place. And because it's a cast, you don't have to worry about the weight as much because they're, they're pretty light mm -hmm. and you want them to be I'm gonna find that Bakker napkin drawing. I think it's in this one. This is like my field photos. Uh, ooh, ooh, yes, yes, yes. And I have a Diplocalus. <laughs> and it says bottom huggers rule. So this is an, a subway napkin. From Dr. Backer. Really Dang, you could, you could put that on, on, on eBay. <laughs> I'm just kidding, don't do that. <laughs> That's oh, messed up. Are you going to see Miria's 12-year-old art? Let's go. 12-year-old Miria, Miria paleo art. <laughs> cute feather theropods rule. That's, is this supposed to be a raptor? I can't see the feet. I think it's supposed to be a Gorgosaurus. Oh. Because I like, love Gorgosaurus. I love Gorgosaurus too. He's a cool guy. He's a cool guy. He is a cool guy. I think he's the coolest. What on earth? There's some weird- I haven't seen this in a while. I guess my mom- this is my mom's handwriting. She's trying to spell out Coelophysis. Mm -hmm. And then I drew Lycerophis on here. So like, um, this guy I had made because I, I loved art growing up, like art and science classes. Mm -hmm. In my art class, like I, <laughs> my teachers got kind of annoyed. Some of them really, really supportive, but I definitely have an art teacher that was kind of like angry with me because all I would do was paleo, paleo art. Yeah. <laughs> he, like hated me. <laughs> I feel like, you know, like if you're, if you're teaching kids, I, you shouldn't get upset. If you're obviously, if it's adults and you're studying human anatomy, like please don't draw, submit dinosaur drawings in my human anatomy class. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's just like a generic art class and like we did sculpting and you know acrylics and stuff like that and it was all all paleo related mm -hmm. oh here's a here's a, a field photo nice oh you got so that that me. alan grant look going yeah my <laughs> freaking like <laughs> oh, little neckerchief yeah so this is david uh -huh. um he is 
been so great and he's a wonderful mentor and I still talk to him, he's fantastic. There's Blocker, there is Kathy and Shauna, and these are volunteers, and Johnny. Mm -hmm. Good old times. So you got so you're basically you're, you're kinda like a paleo princess or paleo paleo royalty. <laughs> it was really I I'm very fortunate to have had um mentors like David and Bacher for sure. Mm -hmm. And honestly, like the the best part, I think why I was able to get in the field of paleo so quickly is because I started really, really early. Um and I just I kept with it. I just I loved it and there were definitely times I wanted to drop out, honestly, mm -hmm. like with COVID and everything, you know, when everything started to hit, I definitely had some doubts. And then in college, especially, I had a really rough patch mm -hmm. um, in my mid-college career. I was, I was really close to dropping out. I was not in a good mental space. Uh, would you like to like expand on that or is it like too personal? I can expand on it. I think it's good to talk about this kind of stuff, even though it's hard. Yeah, because um, I've cause... talked to like other people. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I was just saying I, I've, yeah. I've talked to other people and I've talked to a lot of especially women. Like a lot of like the women I talk to who are in the field have talked about how close they were to dropping out of the field entirely. Or like, you know, some people have just straight up like quit their PhDs due to like, you know, how difficult it is. So, yeah, it was hard. And Mine was, I have been struggling with classes. I've always struggled with math. Mm -hmm. And so when I was getting, I took, I got a BS in geology. So that had all of these math classes that were very hard for me. And then on top of that, I had a very toxic relationship that I was in for like a very long time. Ooh, I'm glad you're in and a better one now. Oof. Me too. <laughs> I mean, it, it was, it was bad. Like sometimes I just would, you know, walk across the street and hope you know, a car would just put me in a hospital. Oh, yeah. It was yeah. not great. Um, but my my mentors there, my Dr. Jacobs and Diana, they were awesome and supportive. And if I didn't have them, like, because I had, you know, it's isolating. And I'm sure people who have been in that kind of situation, they know it's very isolating. You stop seeing friends. I stopped ballroom dancing and I mm -hmm. stopped... Here, I just, oh, it was, it was awful. Um, but yeah, if you're in that situation, you can get out and you do have a choice. So anybody listening for that, you can get out of it. Um, it's not easy, but it gets better. Yeah, it's willpower, faith, hope, you know, all that stuff. <laughs> and it's sure. weird too, because like, yeah, and it, I mean, I was on a thin, I just, I don't know. Getting help was like the best thing and realizing like, I don't have to do this. <laughs> yeah, what what like convinced you to just stick with it besides your mentors was just your straight up passion for the field as well? Yeah, um, actually, so I had a, a project come up with Dr. Jacobs to do a to do an exhibit at the Smithsonian with SNU. Mm -hmm. And so I've been prepping in the lab and I've been going, you know, just kind of going in, doing doing the prep and then my classes and then staying in my dorm room was awful. Mm -hmm. um, the prep was great. But then, you know, my mentor came up and he's like, hey, like we have this opportunity, you know, you're prepping the fossils for it, but do you want to be part of the core team to help decide what kind of content goes in and review and see all the process and that that like changed my course i was very motivated and it was just like this light <laughs> like i i had talked about this before and i just say like the sea monsters saved me like mm -hmm. they were great on and having a mentor is so important that's something i always tell people too is Having a good mentor, because when you are in those times where you're just really struggling, they can always, they see your potential and they push for it. Mm -hmm. For sure. No, I know. Sorry, I'm rambling. No, 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 no. I mean, you're the guest and, you know, that's, this is very insightful into like, you know, the struggle of actually getting into any field, right? Like, and I think, yeah, that is really good advice. Like having a really like, you know, mentor that can guide you and help you out through, you know, difficult times is very important for sure. Um, I mean, I've been through, you know, this isn't paleo related, but, you know, I, you know, I teach karate, right? Like, you know, I, because of the pandemic, um, I haven't been able to go back to doing that. But, um, you know, when I was still a fighter, um, 
Um, my coach basically helped like me get like mentally rehabilitated because I got knocked out during one fight I had, and I had a massive concussion, and I was not only like you know I I lost. I felt depressed. I trained so hard for that fight. I made weight like way before, you know, and you know I was just you know I worked my ass off to get there. And you know this fight happens the day like the day like the week of I get sick I have like some kind of like flu or something, and then I, I was like no I worked so hard I can't stop I can't like postpone this I need I need to fight right so I fought, and obviously my performance was that good because I was sick, and then I got kicked in the back of the head I got you know I blacked out <laughs> it was bad, um but yeah for like two months I had like these debilitating headaches like I took like a week off from work, and. You know, there'd be days where I just sit in my room and I have to put like my pillows over my eyes, just because you know any light would like cause me to like have intense migraines. And my my coach, my you know my coaches helped me like get through this. You know, they're always there for me and like you know they would invite me over and pretty much you know like you know help me out, feed me, would hang out and stuff. And just having that like strong support definitely kept me in the sport or at least like you know attached to it. And you know, I still have a and I still have a passion for it. I don't want to fight anymore, obviously, because first of all, I need my hands to draw, right? But you know, I definitely mm-hmm. still want to teach, and I, you know, that I still want to be involved in it. And a part of that also mainly is also because of how you know great my coaches treated me. So yeah, definitely having a mentor is definitely a very like a a great thing, a good mentor. Yeah. And friends who are gonna going through the same thing. I don't know if you've struggled with this, but imposter syndrome is so big, especially among like grad students. I'm an artist, baby. I have that every day. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey. I mean, is that a big thing in paleo? Like, do you feel like you have imposter syndrome sometimes? Oh my gosh, all the time, all the time. Why? Why, think... why is that? Yeah, Exp- expand on that. I mean, you always. It's kind of weird. So I think I struggle with like paleo as an, as an identity because I've been in it so long. I've, that's what I've known my whole life. So I think that is something that makes the imposter syndrome hard for me because I've just, I don't know, I identify with paleo. Everything I had growing up was dinosaurs and everything. And if I don't do the best I can and be the best in paleo, then what am, you know, what am I? Mm-hmm. And you see all of these people do a a wonderful things but you know what it it's gotten a lot better um it still comes up a lot but i think like this past year i've met a lot of people through really instagram mm-hmm. um like you and shell and all of these wonderful paleo ladies i, I, I know who you're talking about <laughs> i know who yeah. you're talking about yeah you want to shout oh them my- out you can shout them out if you want to you can I shout- Oh my gosh, I need to like get on, I need to like look at everybody so I make sure I like say everybody's name. <laughs> Just in case I forget, I don't want to leave anyone out. I know, and there's going to be like more people too. Um, it's like Ashley Hall, Bryce, Mc- Bryce and Emily and mm-hmm. Evelyn and Holly and Catherine and Katie and Lindsay and Mackenzie and Skye and Sophia and Nikki, all of those people and Charlotte and um, and Dot. Like all of these people, and I'm sure I'm missing some people, so I feel really bad about that. It, it's fine. We'll, um, we'll add them in post, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> we'll do it in post. <laughs> but it's been nice because it doesn't feel like competition, and it's all supportive, and that's really how it should be. For sure. I mean, I like, I feel like it's kind of hard to compete. In, I mean, Paleo, I feel like the only world where it's competitive, and this from an outsider point of view, is in publishing. Yeah. Especially if you're like a big theropod person. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Have you public gotten like are you on any papers at all or are you just strictly in fossil prep right now? I've done two posters. Mm-hmm. Um, I have done some undergrad research. I haven't done a paper, but um I do I think I do want to make my senior thesis into a paper eventually. It's just been it's been hard doing a full-time job and then trying to do um, research as well. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I did. I did my undergrad thesis on Unotosaurus, and it's also Permian, but it's from uh, it's from Malawi, mm-hmm. and it looks like the specimen looks like a potato, and it's possibly um, 
ancestor of turtles. It's kind of debated right now, but and turtle turtle ancestry is just weird, and phylogenetics is weird. We don't mm-hmm. really know um, what that what was happening in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was over this new specimen, so I got to kind of prep on the computer and use like a 3D imaging software with it. It was really fun. So I got to make all the sections of skull online. And mm-hmm. then my internship at the Smithsonian was research, and that was on ichthyosaurs. So I just, I love marine reptiles, and I got to study some of Mary Anning's uh, ichthyosaurs. We actually went to Lyme Regis mm-hmm. and saw her specimens, and that was the coolest thing ever. Dang. So you were, <laughs> you you basically reconnected with the first woman in the field in, like, a weird way, yeah. I got her. I got her plesiosaur on my arm. Oh my god! I forgot you had that tat, dude. <laughs> also, I just realized. I, okay, I'm so dumb. I just realized you're wearing my hoodie. I appreciate you for repping me on the stream. Oh yeah, <laughs> that was like on purpose too. I was like, I'm rep. <laughs> also, I love this. I love this hoodie. Thank you. <clears throat> I know. I see you like wear it like every post. <laughs> so yeah, I appreciate you repping me. I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, dang. Yeah, dang. What a crazy field. Any, yeah. any, f- oh, sorry, you were about to say? No, go for it. I was, I was going to say any fun convention, like convention conference stories. I've heard about a crazy one. Um, I wasn't there for it, uh-huh. but I want to say there was a fist fight over a T-Rex poster. Oh, um, I know this story. <laughs> yeah, you probably know it better than I do. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't want to send. I don't want to spill names, but yeah, there was a fist fight over yeah. a yeah Tyrannosaurus paper, <laughs> quote unquote Tyrannosaurus paper. Um, if people are in the field, they probably know that. Um, but dang, yeah, yeah. What else? What else? Well, I have some tea, but like I don't know if I should say on stream. Okay, yeah, let's not let's not spill like too much like terrible tea. You can tell me after, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah. Message me and I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah. Do you think it's gotten a lot easier for women to get into the field? Because I know that this field has been like incredibly male dominated and I guess, you know, Caucasian dominated, Western dominated since the inception of, you know, the first like paleontological studies. You think it's easier? I think so. I think it, it is getting easier. And, but honestly, I, I don't think I can speak on that because my experience has been very positive and I've had a lot of um, male role models and mentors that have, you know, they haven't treated me any different because I was a girl or a woman. Um, and even my age too, they were always very kind to me. And I, I would get some slack on my age a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I still do sometimes. Um, I think th- I think I've had more problem with the age thing than the woman in paleontology, but mm-hmm. I know for a fact I have some friends who have some horror stories. And actually, you know what? That's not true. I've had like a horrible experience doing a geology camp um, for my major, mm-hmm. and I ended up going going out with a different school, and the people were just very sexist. I had I was partnered with this guy. And I just remember him saying, hey, I need to show you how to do this in case you're paired with another girl. And I'm just... <laughs> that yeah. is... I can't say that right now. <laughs> I was going to say that is some... some oh. Dang. That, yeah, that's terrible. So then what happened? Well, so you know what? I, was, I ended up doing a lot of the work by myself and I got most of it right. And I would say, hey, like, I think this is this and such formation. And he would he would ignore me and then go ask the other guys, you know, for mm-hmm. questions about it. And I just, oh, it was infuriating. I I loved going out in the field and I loved doing the I love doing the geology and mapping, but the people were awful. <laughs> for sure. And I think it's a lot harder in oil and gas um, for women. Oh yeah, of, yeah, of course. Especially, I think. Would you say it's like? more i guess conservative in those fields as well yeah for sure for sure it's it's very old you know good old boys mentality Mm -hmm. for oil and gas and my parents are in oil and gas and i don't know i've yeah i've never 
never wanted to do any of that. I like the geo. I like the structural geology a lot, um, and mm. I like the bone. <laughs> yeah, but Mary, don't don't you like money? I'm just what? <laughs> I said, don't you like money? <laughs> I mean, I'm in paleo, so like. So no. no. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's fair. I respect that. <laughs> yeah, no, so dang. Yeah. I'm glad that you had like very positive experiences because I've talked to obviously you know, I've talked to I talked to a lot of people, yeah. And they have like some crazy crazy like experiences with men in in the in the field. So yeah, no, I mean, I guess it's, you know, I guess, of course, it's different for every person, obviously, from person to person, my experiences are different from yours. But, you know, yeah, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I've been very, very fortunate. I've been in a very nice bubble for most of my, most of my career path. But mm -hmm. no, it's been cool. Like this past year, um, I've gotten a lot better with imposter syndrome and confidence sometimes, I think, mm -hmm. overall. So if I do get comments and stuff like that, I can deal with it better. Mm -hmm, now. For sure. But when I was a teenager, I don't, th I don't think I could handle that. <laughs> I, I think, I think obviously, you know, teenagers. I mean, we were all teenagers once, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, we're the same age, so we, we probably had pretty similar teen experiences. You know, I was really <laughs> into emo <laughs> stuff. I was kind of pretentious <laughs> as a teenager, too. Teenagers have, like, a different mindset. So obviously, yeah, and it's harder for them to accept things. But, you know, we're adults now. Life is... I'd argue life is much easier to handle than as when I was a teenager. Would you say the same? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think... With more technology, you're able to have more kind of groups with people that you're similar with. Exactly, that too. Of, yeah. I also think that's why teenagers now are able to do their makeup so much better than I can now because they have you, they have all these videos like on YouTube how to do stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know if you've seen um, like a comparison of like teens in the in the in the nineties and two thousands and then teens now. You yeah. Know? I've seen that the uh, teens back then, because they didn't have the resources, they dressed like like doo doo. But now, <laughs> <laughs> just a different style. I mean, <laughs> there's some I things I Crocs. did that <laughs> I regret. I mean, what, did, what were you gonna say? You wore Crocs and what? I I wore Crocs and baggy T-shirts before it was cool, but I did not look cool wearing. <laughs> sure, I was hella emo, dude. I had like the scene kid hair. Or like I had like looked like I had a helmet on my head, hey. you know. I do the hair flip like every day, talking to girls and be like, "Hey, I'm Andrew." <laughs> yeah, I'm I, I like Fall Out Boy. Yeah, you know, I don't really like mainstream <laughs> music. It's funny because now I listen to like pretty mainstream music. <laughs> oh, yeah. Picks or it didn't happen. Yeah, we need to see your e-boy picks. <laughs> oh my god, uh, it's on my like. Let me see. If I could find one. Let me see. Let me go on. <laughs> I'm just scared because it's on my personal account. I don't want people following that. I don't know if there's a way for me to block it out. You know, I'll show you later. That's, we don't need the stream. Doesn't need to see me with emo hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so much harder to be a teenager now. Yeah, I mean, I guess it is like however you look at it too. Is you have all of these expectations and people are using filters and stuff. Yeah, I guess it's different for everybody. That's true. I guess it's both yeah. easier and harder. There's obviously there's positive and negatives to living in the, yeah. the modern world. Um, I think teenagers now have it at least like in terms of like finding information much easier. And I think if you can take advantage of that, that's a good thing. Like obviously, you know, you've got these kids get making millions doing minecraft let's plays or convincing their parents to invest in bitcoin or dogecoin if you if you oh my god like i i invested in dogecoin way too late because oh my god it jumped it jumped up by like four thousand percent for like a day and it kind of just stayed there like the stock price i bought it when it was around like three thousand percent and i ended up losing like ten dollars and i was just like oh, i hate my life <laughs> but yeah did you invest in the in the game stonk i was so mad about that my friend called me like the week before it got big and he's like 
Yo, Andrew. I was like, yo, what's up? <laughs> you should invest in GameStop stocks. You know, they're, they're going pretty big right now for some reason. You know, they're manipulating the hedge funds. And I was just like, yeah, I'll think about it, you know. Because, you know, the few times I'd invested, because I'd invested in, like, clean energy and stuff, I got no returns. <laughs> And then a week hap la a week passes, and then I seen the news: GameStop stocks gone up by like like you know this many percent, you know thousands percent. You know this kid got rich off his ten GameStop stocks and is now buying a new gaming PC. This dude is like you know got millions of dollars, and I was just like, I could be I could have been an artist full time in an alternate universe. That's what I'm thinking. But um, <laughs> did, did you at all, or did, you know, is it too risky? You think it's too risky? I don't do that, but Ben does. So he he put some money in there, not like a lot, but he, he didn't get anything from it. <laughs> Dang, it's too. All right, well, I'll yeah. I'll let you know if there's another big stock, <laughs> big Don't. stock jump. Yeah. <laughs> See, Evan says GameStop and AMC stock aren't that volatile, from what I heard, even with the spike in price. Maybe I will try investing in AMC stock because it hasn't spiked too hard yet. So we'll see. We'll see. There you go. Could just stress me out. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. It's like obviously I'm not gonna put. I never put more than like a hundred dollars into a into like a stock. I like, you know, a stock trade, because I'm I'm scared of the risk. But I have friends who put like, five uh, k savings. Boop. Let's see what happens. I was like, y'all are crazy, man. But yeah. <laughs> anyway, to bring this to bring this back to back to paleo. What do you think were right. like the major drawbacks from getting into this field? The drawbacks. I don't know, like, I still have, like, those colored glasses sometimes. Uh, okay, um, drawbacks. The flexibility. So this job, usually, especially if you're in fossil prep, you'll probably work weekends mm -hmm. and around holidays. So the flexibility to take off time around holidays is pretty rough. Um, and then you're kind of, you don't really get a choice, really, um, on the location. You kind of have to go where the jobs are since they there are pretty few jobs. Mm -hmm. So you've got that. Obviously, you know, you're not making crazy money. But I don't think that, I mean, most people who go in paleo do it because they love it. For sure. So, yeah, definitely not. And, and that's the other thing, too, is people who are really interested in, in paleo and are nervous about those drawbacks. I mean, you can make it a hobby. Mm -hmm. You can become part of groups and stuff like that. Or you can listen to podcasts or whatever doesn't have to be doesn't have to be it for sure and obviously the major positives are i get to work with dinosaurs <laughs> oh another drawback is injury so injury oh because of the field yeah well you can get hurt in the field but you can oh here's a i have, I have a story okay. but you can also hurt yourself prepping and so you can overwork your muscles and tendons, just like you can in like dental hygiene and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but a field story, uh, there was a teacher. So there were a bunch of teachers out in Seymour, the red beds where the Diplocolis and the Dimetrodon is found. Mm -hmm. And she had a centipede crawl up her leg and bite her. So she ended up being hospitalized and claimed it was worse than childbirth. So, <laughs> yeah. You have to be careful where you are because there are lots of snakes and a lot of times when you're out in the field you may have to put a tarp over the fossils that you're digging for the next day or oh you know, yeah and the animals like to hide under that up. yeah <laughs> lots of snakes and and mice and bugs and spiders for sure that's terrifying actually <laughs> yeah we're all like you know biology weenies so whenever there's like a snake or something it's really cool. Like, dang, that's a cool, that's a cool snake, man. So when I was first volunteering with the museum mm -hmm. out, out in the, like, digging and stuff, mm -hmm. at night, um, David would go, would have, like, one car, and a couple of us would go at night to go herping, and we'd just, like, drive around, and it's, I mean, it's very, it's not very populated out there, so you can see all the stars, and there's tons of bats, and, mm -hmm. and all kinds of critters. So we'd go out and just drive a little bit and go look for snakes that are resting on the on the asphalt because it mm -hmm. would be warm at night. We got to see some frogs and, and snakes, and that was always cool. Yeah, no, that's like I like herping too. So like that, yeah, that sounds kind of sounds like my dream. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm kind of hyped when I get into the field, or like when I go fielding just for fun as a volunteer, really? like. 
I mean, herping like at night or like, you know, camping, <laughs> drinking. Uh, anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that's, that's all of the above. All of the above for sure. <laughs> what at are, the same time. How is the camp? What's the camping like when you're out in the field? So I've been really fortunate and we haven't really camped. I've done camping for geology, but for Seymour, where I've dug most of the time, we actually stay in like cabins. Ooh, I have I have a couple of stories. Okay. So in Seymour, you never want to stay. Well, it's probably different now, but you didn't want to stay at the Sagamar Inn Motel. Why? Because we, my mom and I got in for the night, probably about 2 a.m. It was an eight hour drive from Houston to Seymour. Okay. We got in, we got in our hotel, and I had never heard my mother cuss before. And she was dropping all kinds of words, you know, ah, ah, you know, was up, just like totally wigged out. And I'm like waking up, what is going on? And she was, bed bugs, bed bugs. And so I look, and all these black bed bugs are crawling all over the bed and all over my clothes. It was awful. That is disgusting. <laughs> yeah. So we ended up saving one in a bag and brought it to the people at the front desk. And we're like, you guys have bed bugs? We're like, oh, don't, we don't have bed bugs. They were in denial about it. And then they offered us the room right next to it. So we ended up staying at um, the place where most of the volunteers would stay at or the, the dig crew called it was Nancy's Warehouse. And that has- That sounds worse. So it yeah there was no ac and stuff got pretty hot during the summer so that's why we were initially at the hotel or the motel mm -hmm. to kind of have a little bit of ac but the place we would stay there was this lady um named nancy and she would host the dig crew every time they they came out i honestly don't know how she met the houston museum folks but very very nice um huge like picture a giant warehouse with two stories and at the bottom, you have just pallets full of just boxes full of antique stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you have a huge kind of kitchen room and it's all downstairs. And then you have an, a very jank elevator that goes up to the second floor. And you have the spiral staircase, also very jank, mm -hmm. um, to this huge, like, I don't know, I think it... I think Holly said it was originally a bowling alley at one point and then a dance hall, but it's turned into this lady's house kind of, mm -hmm. um, just a very interesting, interesting place. So we ended up staying there most of the time, avoiding bed bugs, but suffering <laughs> in the heat. <laughs> um, and then there was another place we would stay to and, and David liked to call it butcher holler. And that was well, call, wait, call, call it what? Butcher what? Butcher, butcher holler. Holler. Okay, okay. I was going to say, this sounds like a place where like a serial killer lives. Yeah, it honestly... <laughs> honestly, yeah, it was really gross. Um, uh-huh. And it had like, it had pictures of... Um, and when you're coming there at night, it's kind of creepy because there's no lights and you're just going down a dirt road for a couple of miles. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have like the places where they hang the animals. Mm -hmm. So you have like almost the nooses lining up. And then when you go into the cabin, there are pictures of the hunters with their, you know, their animals that are all bloody and all of that. Mm -hmm. And so it's just really, it's just really creepy. Um. <laughs> and they got an owner with a hook for a hand and an eye patch, and he's all like, "You want a room?" <laughs> yeah. It's so it's, it's creepy at night, yeah. Yeah, for sure. You see, like, the eyes on the pictures moving, like, watching you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like Haunted Mansion. Like Haunted Mansion, yeah, except, except worse, because you could actually die. <laughs> <sighs> and no one would know. No one would hear you. That's true. That's Yeah, that is terrifying, <laughs> yeah. Like, living, like, those middle-of-nowhere stories, like, kind of, kind of scare me, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I think that's one thing that kind of scares me about, like, ever going, like, you know, out in the field and like having to stay in like a random hotel in the middle of nowhere. I just think of like Courage the Cowardly Dog and how he's like in the yeah. middle of nowhere. You know, I'm gonna run into you know obviously I mean obviously you run into care some interesting characters, right? When you're you know, just out in the field and stuff too. And or like not who are not even part of like, you know, Paleo. They're just you know, maybe you go back in, into the town and there's like, I don't know, some weird kind of like almost like a tweaker, but he's not like you think he's a tweaker. 
But no, he's just weird. So it's not, we didn't go for a paleo trip, but Ben and I went camping last, or I guess last fall. Mm -hmm. And we went to this, Arkansas, this um, giant park in Arkansas. And we, we didn't really ha know where we were going. And the camping's pretty dispersed and there, weren't, there wasn't any signage. And it was just us and our dog. Okay. And so when we got there, we set up the, t the tent and everything. We were hearing gunshots until 10 o'clock at night. Everybody was going crazy because there were footsteps outside the tent. And we were just by ourselves, like no person in sight. It's the creepiest thing. It's like a head headless guy with an axe is going to look for you. This is like some, that's not like some Blair Witch stuff, man. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you, you wake up in the morning, there's like, a, there's like a wooden doll outside your tent, like crucified or something. <laughs> Yeah, no, that that would be terrifying. Well, do I have any creepy camping stories? I not really. I've only gone camping in like very public areas, like very touristy camping areas. Like it's camping, quote unquote. But you're like you're basically in a resort where you camp alongside other families. But I've never been like out in the field camping, camping, you know, like Wild West. <laughs> you know, I'm good. I I'm not like I'm not gonna throw a fit if I have to go camping for anything. But if I had to pick, it'd be nice to have AC and a shower and just, you know, feel safe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I thought you were going to say it'd be nice just to have no gunshots sounding off when I'm that sleeping. Too. Yeah. You Fear your life a little bit. Yeah. They don't, you know. <laughs> For sure. Dang. The hash sleeping flasher. Yes. <laughs> what, uh. what a tweaker. <laughs> oh, chill. Um, but yeah. Dang. So... I guess fieldwork is basically just in t an entire like a bunch of randomness, especially because you know a bunch of people from different backgrounds, whose only thing that links them is paleontology, right? And you put them together, and then chaos ensues. I'm assuming, or only oh, at night yeah. when people get drunk and stuff. <laughs> yes, there are uh, pretty much any person who has gone to dump has done field work there are always like stories mm -hmm. for me a lot of them come from like geology geology with all the college kids and everything oh, um, college kids yeah college kids but it's a good time it's mm -hmm. really fun for sure okay so i'm kind of yeah i'm i'm hyped now for when i go digging <laughs> in july <laughs> um let's see what else let's just let's shift to like some some stuff that you're working on right now what are you working on right now in the pro museum right that you're allowed to talk about obviously yeah um so i'm actually allowed to talk about most of it because i've already gotten it cleared through our like supervisor and um pr person mm -hmm. so i'm working on mostly pachyrinosaurus pro orum and that was because we had a curator there who studied that stuff. And it's from Northern Alaska. Mm -hmm. So I'm working on packy bones. And if that stuff is hard to prep, um, it is a very dense rock. And you have to use a special tool called an air scribe. And you have to use a tough one too. And it vibrates and um, uses air to vibrate a needle to scribe the rock off. Mm -hmm. So... And that stuff, you got to wear the respirator, the ear protection. You most mostly want to wear some sort of lab coat or apron because it gets everywhere, mm -hmm. the rock. Um, so that's what I'm working on most of the time. And then I also have some Permian stuff. Uh, cool. at our collection. And it's a really cool animal called, we think, Catylorhynchus. Do you know anything about Catylorhynchus? That's a big, he big, small head, big body, right? Yeah, the Chad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Let me see if I can pull up a picture. You pull up a photo. Yeah, yeah. What, did, what did Evan say? I went on a fossil dig and there was a bear at our campsite. Jesus <gasps> Christ. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Brown bear or black bear, Evan? Yeah, that's important. I feel like I want, it's like a tornado. Like, I really want to see it because I'm fascinated, but I'm also terrified. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, bears. I'm gonna stay away Teddy from bear. bear. <laughs> Let me see. Yeah, this this guy. I haven't pulled up this guy. Oh, you can see on yeah, the screen. Yeah, it took like, like ten is. seconds. Black what bear. Thank God, it. Evan. So okay, why was its head so small? Let's talk about this thing because this thing is a weird animal. I never understood why this thing's head was so small. Why its body was so. I'm assuming this thing's like a herbivore, right? 
Yeah, it's like a pattern though. Um, with sauropods and other herbivores, like they, sometimes they have really small, Adaphosaurus is kind of like that. Mm-hmm. And it's because they're probably doing most of their digestion in their stomachs. So yeah. they're not really chewing, they're kind of just swallowing. Maybe they have a, multiple stomachs probably. Mm-hmm. And I don't know about Catilorhynchus, but you do have astroliths which is pretty common in herbivores to help mat- they swallow stones to help mash the food up. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Oh, on um, the Catilorhynchus specimen, I got some like weird, weird kind of stuff happening. It's not bone, but it could be some sort of evidence of the digestive tract. We're not sure. Mm-hmm. So I'm uncovering that. Um, I don't know. It could just be matrix. Could just be some weird rock happening in there, but it's, it's the, I got a rib there and then either a femur or um, humerus. And then I have some lumbar vertebrae that are huge mm-hmm. um, for this animal. And then also really, really thin bone. I'm not really sure what it's from, like what part of the body. I love the Dibblecala so much. Oh, the thank you. And <laughs> it's getting there. It's so getting cute. there. But um, I'm yeah. gonna get that. That'd be like a cool tattoo. Oh, for sure. Right right above your lower back? Right on your lower back? Yeah, yeah. I was just about to say. <laughs> um, Don't tell you. I, I might have to. <laughs> right, for sure. Just be sure to credit me. <laughs> yeah, right? Dinosaur comics, like, at the bottom of some... The dinosaur comics drew this. Yeah. <laughs> um, dang. Let's shift to, like, your, your social media stuff. So what... What have you been up to on social media? I know that you are in the SciComm world now, and what got you into that? I don't know. Like, it's fun. Um, I've always loved, like, when I was volunteering at the Houston Museum, I enjoyed the prepping. I enjoyed volunteering with, or doing stuff with volunteers. And I also really loved kind of sharing the, like, the fossil passion, like, getting out and showing people, people fossils and talking to them about it. Mm-hmm. And I think... For me, it's fun because people, when they go to the museum, they're excited to learn and they're excited to know about stuff. And so when you have somebody that's interested in what you're interested, it's so much fun. Mm -hmm. Um, And so social media is kind of that way. It started out like just, you know, a personal thing and then, you know, sharing, sharing kind of my story for myself because I love to take pictures because I always go back and look at them and remember. I think it's good good memories and my mom always took photos so i think that kind of carried over to me and i don't know it's a lot of fun and i've just gotten on to like TikTok, and it's so fun because the trends are just it's a creative outlet for sure and i haven't really been drawing or doing much art too much lately and it's been like a creative outlet for me too sure yeah you know I, like you like doing like with fortnite dancing and <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. Like I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, I'm on like the weird side. I'm like on the the frog TikTok and like the animals and mm-hmm. the weird humor. <laughs> Chell said, "Can it's we get so some cool. yeah, Kawaii trend, Miria?" Like, "Hello, I'm Miria. This is my fossil. We're wearing <laughs> wearing like all like you know anime inspired yeah. like you know makeup, all pastel pink." <laughs> I will do it if you really want me to. I'll do it. There you go. You gotta, you gotta pay her first, though. <laughs> oh, what? I so said you gotta pay her first, though. You gotta pay it. I'm talking about you. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm a paleontologist. I need to do, you know, this extra. I need, I need extra, extra. But yeah, oh dang. Oh my gosh. Yes, that trend where it's, yeah. So, me, san, chi, nya, arigato. <laughs> and then it's the, you know, it's in the, the deep voice, and oh, it's kind of weird. Each knee, so, yeah, I know. Yeah. She, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Do you do like TikToks with other people? I don't have TikTok. I've seen some of your guys' TikToks on Instagram. I guess it's a real quote unquote. But yeah, yeah. Do you like collab? Is there people you collab with often to do TikToks or um, no? So at the very beginning, um, I did do some with people, but it's hard because a lot of the trends are. I don't know, they're in person, and so it's hard to kind of do that from afar. But you can also do what's called a duet, mm-hmm. and you can kind of, like, put the two side by side. I haven't done that yet, but I it's something I, I should do. 
Um, I swear I saw this really long one. It was like you, I think Catherine was in it, and Emily yeah. Keeble. It's still like a rap song. That was a while ago. That was a while ago. That was that was a TikTok, a TikTok trend. Um, we did do that. Mm -hmm. But those come up less often where you have the larger groups. I hope we're going to be able to do one another one soon. That's fair. Are you guys planning to do like a large like group group thing eventually? Like, I don't know, a show or something, a talk show? Oh, yeah. So I just started a YouTube channel and I need to I need to work on the second episode. But mm -hmm. I do plan on having some like people show up and talk. I think that would be a lot of fun to collab. For sure, you know, there's, I know some guy who's free to, you know, go in some videos, this guy. <laughs> I'm just kidding, you don't have to put me in your show, but if you, if you want to. No, you know. it's fun, we can talk about paleo art. Oh yeah, for sure. I have a lot of spicy, spicy things to spill about paleo artists, but if you want me to Ooh, <laughs> yeah. I want to hear, all, I want just like a whole episode about the hot gossip within paleo art. The hot gossip, yeah. It's all it's all hearsay, but you know, I won't mention anything here though. This is my show, I'll get in trouble. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> we'll do an anonymous. Like, an anonymous. Do do <laughs> it's a voice changer. I'm in like a yeah. <laughs> black, like, like my face is shadowed, like it's a Discovery Channel, like documentary or something. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's cool. Like, have you like, How's your growth been on, on like Instagram? Like, are you mainly focusing on Instagram and TikTok? Yeah, I think so. I, honestly, like, I, Twitter is hard. Um, and the other thing too is the, all the people I have on Twitter are mostly other paleo people. So my content is kind of for the general public, I think, or people that are interested in paleo that may not be in there already. Mm -hmm. So it's harder for me to kind of promote my stuff through. It, uh, Twitter I'll still do it and like Facebook but on Instagram I'm hoping like I guess my goal I'm also an if then ambassador which is our mission is to inspire like young girls into STEM mm -hmm. and so it's my priority has kind of shifted from like a personal Instagram to like an inspirational or you know this is what you can be when you grow up or an interest in STEM mm -hmm. so and it, it's better for Instagram and TikTok because you're able to get, I don't know, I would say I'm able to get better audience, like a wider ver variety of audience through those two platforms. And Twitter, I just, just haven't really figured out Twitter. That's fair. Twitter um, Twitter is a magical cesspool of scum and villainy. So I understand. Yeah. I understand why it's harder. I personally don't and like just, Twitter that much. <laughs> I, yeah, oh. I, don't, I don't like it. Cause it it's just weird, and you can't you can only put so many characters, and it's mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not a fan. And maybe it's because I'm not good at it. I'm like yeah, I don't like it, but <laughs> for sure. Yeah, no, you don't have to like for like push yourself for sure to understand yeah. it. Um, speaking of if then, let me pull this up real quick. Nice. Oh, I'm allowed to say now, but what? with if then. We all, all the women that are involved with with them, which is 125, mm -hmm. we all got free and, and we are in 3D printed into statues. So we're going to be at North Park Mall um, in Dallas, Texas, like as an exhibit for women in STEM. Nice. So when you're here in Texas, you can go see, <laughs> I'm orange, but we're all, all orange. You can go by Orange Miriam. <laughs> <laughs> I have like weird people like, like, like hugging them. <laughs> Yeah. Let me see. Let me pull up some of your videos on YouTube real quick. Let's watch them. Oh no. I'm trying to find your if and then. Is this the one if then the one where you were doing the you're helping this woman fossil prep? Oh yeah, that was my CBS episode. Okay, damn, can I find it? That was that was weird. Um, how was that? Cool. Yeah, how was that? I think I got it pulled up. It was intense. Like we spent almost a whole day filming, um, which gave me a lot of insight to like how, I don't know how like how to do a YouTube video or how to just do videos in general. Uh huh. It was wild. It was wild, and I, I found out that I don't think I could be an, an actor. <laughs> Why? What do you mean? You did great. It was. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> There is a lot of takes. Like I was so, I was so nervous. Oh, for um, real? There were so many cameras and lights. Like it's, it's gotten better because now I'm and today we're highlighting trying to do TikTok. 
Mm -hmm. stuff like that but staring into like the eye of the camera is so it's just very intimidating um when you're first starting out yeah because it's hard it's easy to talk when you see a person yeah yeah i got got this pulled up right here oh yeah i've been doing a lot of like classroom talks and i'm a part i'm a part of this exhibit that that might be discovery oh yeah yeah. i thought this was discovery channel for some reason i was like dang mary i'm discovery channel <laughs> I have that same story. shirt. I have that same shirt. I, turn on all the I got it at Ross. <laughs> oh my god! Really? Yeah. Hold up. Let me see. If, let me. Let me find. Let me go in my closet real quick. I got it from the LA County Museum. Really? Okay. Hold. When, you get when you're here. Let me go. To, let me yeah. go to my closet real quick. Let me pull it out. Okay. Oh no! You're on mute. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. It's yeah, it's funny too because um, a lot of people will have the same paleo shirts. It's just you know everybody kind of goes to the same museums or some museums actually have the same gift shop, like kind of stuff. So people will yeah. Oh, that one's slightly different. Covering fossils of all. That one's a little here. Let me go. I'll go grab mine. My those look smaller. Understand our Earth's history, which is important for our Earth's future. For me, it was always paleontology. I've always been the dinosaur kid growing up. My journey started very young, and I started really picking up paleontology when I became a volunteer at the age of 12 at the Houston Museum. I started fossil prep. I gave to okay. the museum. Okay. Oh my gosh, yeah. I was with them. Um, and from there, I chose uh, Southern here it is. University with Dr. Lewis Jacobs, who's a paleontologist there. I think you're on so mute, I Andy. To work in the fossil lab as an and there you go. Okay, okay, here. That was so dumb. All right. So, <laughs> basically, yeah, they're almost the same. Mine are, like, filled in in black, and I have a triceratops on mine. And yours has T-Rex instead. We have T-Rex, a raptor, and then stegosaurus. So we're, like, all over the place. Yeah, I, I got a raptor, a triceratops, a stegosaurus, and I'm assuming that's, like, a brachiosaurus or something. And a pterosaur, like Pteranodon. Yeah. Dang. You have this I do not. I feel like every paleo person needs to have a cringy, like, dinosaur shirt. Luckily, before I started buying dinosaur clothes, I, I became a hype beast. Like, I know I'm not dressed up like a hype beast right now, but... <laughs> I was like, I am not buying that shirt. <laughs> I am not buying that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there, it, that, that, that shirt reminds me of like the we call this the wolves. You know what I'm talking about? Like the wolves howling at the moon, the three yeah, wolves. Yeah. yeah, that's why I was like, that is that is so like corny. Oh my god. But yeah, dang. Yeah. Height height beast. Speaking Wait, of is that is that Aiden? Hi. Yeah, it's Aiden. Oh my gosh, hi Aiden. <laughs> I've been meaning to get on I'll get on Aiden's live too. I caught him um Looking at his White River stuff, which is super cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was like, y'all should stream. Dang, Aiden, you should stream on Twitch. I think a lot of people like to see, like... There is no, like, paleontologist yeah. streamer. So that would be, like, very interesting to see. You want to see my YouTube setup? Yeah. I figured this um, was, like, a YouTube room. This is, like, a plain white room with a... I'm assuming that's, like, a light. Either that or you're a serial killer and this is where you like keep people. This is where I like no, I have I have way too many plushies too, so Oh that's so cute. That is that is dope. I'm still waiting Look, for, I don't, for your next YouTube video. I love paleo plushies. Those are so cute. They're they're really expensive. <laughs> I know. I, so the reason I was able to get them was for this for if then, like the YouTube channel is part of this. Um, grant that I applied for to like promote STEM, like uh-huh. women in STEM. So I, I was like, I gotta get some decor. For sure, for <laughs> sure. Oh, was that was it? So you're all like, yeah, I need some decor. So um, can you pay for this? <laughs> Pretty much. Well, I I had asked you know like what what can I buy with it? Now I have to get equipment. Like, well, you can also do like you know decoration stuff. Oh, okay. say no more. Say no more. I I got it, fam. I got it. Awesome. Alright, speaking of social media, one thing I think especially like with women in social media, you know, they get simps, man. You got any simp oh, stories? Yeah. 
nice. I have some. I have some story stories. Oh my gosh. Lay it on me. Um, the number of like sugar daddy DMs and comments is pretty funny. It's pretty funny. So like, I don't know. I didn't. I never got like too good about it because I just think. I just think it's funny. Um, I think at one point I had come, I had like tagged my boyfriend. Hey, like, should we get a sugar daddy? <laughs> <laughs> um, just like call them out. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. I got... <laughs> my girlfriend's boyfriend. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm always like trying to decide if it's better to just delete those kind of things or to just let them look dumb and people other people call them out on it and just you know show like this is terrible. I don't know. I like. Um, I would personally like leave it. To just make them look dumb, especially because you know people are gonna comment like hey, "simp," like you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like deleting them, I feel like just make incur like you know. They first of all, I don't think you get notified when your comment gets deleted. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. So like, I think that just having it there, them getting like goofy replies and stuff, just makes them look stupid, and they're gonna stop trying. That's true. Like, have yeah. other people call. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Um, I've had like an a real an, an IRL simp in real life. So um this person was a volunteer and it just got kind of creepy. Uh -huh. So like the personal space got to be kind of weird. And this person was kind of stalking me and kept trying to add me as a friend on Facebook. <laughs> And just would try to, every time I was like working in the lab, I would get up to maybe like go to the computer or go to the bathroom and he would also get up. So wherever I was, he had to also be. He was just kind of this looming person. So, <sighs> awkward teenagers, awkward teenage boys in the chat. If you're trying to get a girlfriend, that's, an, <laughs> that's first of all. <laughs> For step number one, don't follow them as soon as they get up from their desk. <laughs> That's step number one. All right. <laughs> it's not romantic to follow a girl, you know, and when she says no, thinking that like, oh my God, if, you know, she just says, she's just saying no, but you know, I know deep down if I keep trying, she'll fall for me. No, she's not. She's not going to do that. <laughs> it's good to be assertive, but not like that. <laughs> yeah i know yeah dang that's terrible eventually like he got like let go or something right or he got like told yeah, to leave he had other yeah there were other problems too it wasn't just the, the creepy factor there were some other problems so he was eventually um let go he had actually done the same thing to other women too apparently mm -hmm. um yeah <laughs> yeah for, for, if y'all want a girlfriend don't be a simp that's that's the number one rule man women don't like simps don't be a simp <laughs> Yeah, don't be a simp, man. That's don't be a creep. Just don't be a creep. That's why I'm a title. Can... I'm a title. This. This is why I'm a title. This one. I put this on YouTube. Don't be a simp with Miriam Perez. <laughs> you can be a simp quietly, but you just don't be a creep. That's that's true. I mean, <laughs> who do I simp? I mean, I love my girlfriend. I wouldn't say I simp her. I mean, I guess I do simp her. I don't know. Does that... I for me, Have like, you had her on the Twitch? I I mean, I've had her when I was like, I think when I played Pokemon Snap a few nights ago, she was on. And we were just talking about the game. That was fun. Um, I haven't had her on like this show because she doesn't really do dinosaur stuff. She's a costume designer. I'll probably have her. We should talk about her costume design stuff eventually. Oh, did she, does she? Is she into paleo too or herbs and stuff? No. <laughs> no. No. Really? Yeah. I know. Bummer. But you know, <laughs> I I think it's good to have. Um, what do you call this? I like um, having relationships where it's like we have different hobbies and interests and we could ha like share them with each other without exactly like I guess crossing the line into each other because I feel like if I dated an artist it would feel almost like a competitive relationship. Yeah. I know there's like a lot of women too who kind of like don't like dating people in paleo. I mean <laughs> I mean have you have you done it? No. No, I haven't. Yeah, it's just this is just like hearsay from people like other like you know friends I have. Like it just doesn't sound. It just drama. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Sometimes it works out. Sometimes it's really cute. There are a couple like really cute paleo couples, but a lot of the times like if you have an ugly 
you know, ending to it. It's it's rough because it's a tiny field. And you yeah. That You'll see them at a conference and it'll just be like. Yeah. <laughs> it's like hiding. Like. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh, yeah. Oh, one thing I shared with my girlfriend is we both like cosplay. So we always go to anime conventions and stuff. I love going to oh. anime conventions. I know. But, um, yeah, speaking of simps, I'm trying to think of if I have simps. I know I do. Yeah. I have people who, like, I guess maybe it's not really simp. I have super fans there. It's so super fans. I don't have anyone being like, wow, Andy, you're so head sub. Could I see your, like, your, your toes <laughs> or something? You know, I don't have anyone like that. But I do have super fans who I really, really appreciate. I guess, I guess being a man is different. I guess, I don't know. That's, that's messed up. <laughs> I mean, you ha you don't really like share photos of yourself. So like, do you th do you think people just assume that you're a dude or? Oh my god, there was a point because my art style is like really cutesy. People thought I was a girl, <laughs> and I was I was like thinking in my head like, yo, what if I use a picture of my girlfriend for my face reveal like as a joke? And then we'll, I'll see like how many people are like, oh my god, dinosaur comics! I didn't know you were a woman. Wow, <laughs> check your check your DMs. Yeah, I'd respectfully simp for you if I wasn't poor. Hey, Skink, you're a G, man. You're not my simp. You're a homie, man. Don't worry about that. You're not a simp, man. You're cool. You know. Chell said some people think I'm a guy. I don't know why, man. That you, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's good. I'm glad you've had mainly positive, like very few simp experiences because there are some some people who have the most heinous like evil mm. like stuff i have read in my life you know so yeah. yeah that's rough i i've gotten photos and like i think they're pretty much I, every time i get like a, a dm from somebody i don't know or don't follow it pops up in like my requests mm -hmm. and it always like, anytime somebody sends a photo it blurs it out so you have to like double click i guess to see the photo <laughs> so i'm like Every time I get one of those, like, hey, can you check this out? Because I usually get rocks and, and fossils and stuff to ID. Uh -huh. Like, every time I'm like, all right, like, click fast, look, all right, all right, it's a rock, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a vaguely, like, fleshy shape. And it's like, oh, it's, a, it's just a rock. Oh, snap. It's almost that heart attack, damn. What are, like, the weirdest, like, fossil ID, like, situations you've had? Oh, I had this one person, um, he had a very interesting, like, rock, and it had different kind of tubes and stuff. To me, it looked like a burrow. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I was like, hey, like, I think this looks like a burrow. Here's a picture of what I have. And so he starts, like, cleaning it, and it turns out it's just trash with mud and dirt on it. <laughs> so, I felt kind of sad. I <laughs> like, really sad for him. It's like, well, I felt... I've seen, <laughs> like, I'm not an expert, but some people, I've, I've seen a DM where, like, someone said, I found the T-Rex tooth. It was just, yeah. it was just a, a, a oblong rock. Like, eggs. Oh. I get, <laughs> so many people ask if it's a dinosaur egg, and it's just, like, a nodule. And these things are rounds. So, like, I get, like, if you don't have any, any sort of, like, geology knowledge, I get it, but... Some people are super into kind of making up a story with it. They're like, oh, you can see the eye and, and the face and everything. Like, well, eye and face of what? The embryo the that was fossilized in the, in the rock? Dinosaur. First of all, I don't think any egg has fossilized that cleanly, right? I mean, I'm sure like the like Myasaur, like more like Cretaceous stuff, but like in general, like isn't that like super ultra rare to like have the embryo inside fossilize as well? <laughs> yeah and it's it's funny too because i mean things will just be vaguely shaped and it's like well you wouldn't have the eye because it would be long gone and not fossilized so mm -hmm. yeah it's it's funny um it's less funny when you have the people who are adamant that it is you know what they claim it is mm -hmm. no you're wrong no this is what i have here and you have to just kind of be like Sorry. All right. Good luck. And for I'm me, sorry. that's really dumb. Cause that's like, that's like me going to my math teacher asking if the answer is right, and when he says no, it's yeah. wrong. I'd be like, no, it's actually right. You don't know anything, even though that's your math teacher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
dang it. I know. And it's hard too. So like if you're ever out like fossil collecting on land that you're allowed to, mm -hmm. it's very good to like note where it comes from because if you ever want to get it identified or donate it, we can't do anything without context. And I, this goes for archaeology as well, more so than, than paleo. Mm -hmm. Context is everything. Like once you lose the location and where this thing was found, like it can be sometimes useless to, pe to paleontologists. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. Dang. So. I like his eyes. Oh, thank you. I, I wasn't sure if this was correct, like, because I know, like, modern frogs do this, but I wasn't sure. And I was up like, I'm ready for Mario to tear me a new one if, like, these are wrong. But, okay, you like them, so I, I, guess, I guess I'm right. <laughs> or it's possible. I mean, we, don't, we don't know. We don't know what they look like. I mean, it's probably more accurate to, to make it look like an amphibian eye. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Oh, I don't have it here. But there was um, like a toy or like a model Diplocolis and it had been painted pretty bad. And I decided to give it colors like the red salamander. Mm -hmm. So I ended up painting. I was like really bored. Um, and I like doing that. Where'd you put it? It's, on my o it's in my office. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's like, it's kind of hard because I have books there and then I have some books here and every time I want to reference something, I have it in the other. I know, you have the other office at, at work. Yeah, uh -huh. I've seen your office. I don't know if you want to share pictures of your office, if you have any on you, like on your phone. Because you have an insane office. I've seen that. It's like. It's dialed down now. Oh, why? <laughs> it's, a, it's a fire hazard. It Maria. was just a lot. It was a lot. So I had. um. I'll have to look for the photos. If, if I don't find them now, they're probably buried deep. But I had all of all of my dinosaur toys out. And after 25 years of dinosaur toys, you have a lot. For sure. <laughs> they were just everywhere. <laughs> and it was like, it's like a kid's room because they're all like my childhood stuff. So I just put them out on display. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of books. I probably, I probably sent a picture to you. So maybe I'll look on our messages. Probably that was like hell a long ago, man. That was like I know, like a year. It's probably been a year. It's probably been a year for sure. All of the shoe photo. <laughs> <laughs> hey Mary, look at my Jordans. Look. Oh man, I guess not. Oof, it's That's all good. Okay. It's all good. Yeah. A lot of a lot of stuff. What do you what do you think like the future of paleo is going to be like? Because I don't know what technology exists right now and how like what will change and how we depict dinosaurs. And do you think we're ever going to have like more modern looking depictions of dinosaurs in popular media? I don't know. I mean, so Ark is already doing. I think it's Ark um, doing a great job of trying to be accurate. I'm so like I'm so disappointed with like Jurassic World. I mean, I know it's for inter entertainment purposes and stuff like that, but man, if there was an opportunity to promote like scientifically accurate animals, and I know they're not scientific, they weren't made to be scientifically accurate, but it just would make them cooler because you have this kind of real factor um, mm -hmm. that these animals were actually living, you know, more realistic than dinosaurs. Because the first movie. They had paleontologists, and, and for the third movie, too, in the second, they are, were actually really consulting paleontologists about how accurate things were. I mean, mm -hmm. of course, they're like, the raptors are too big, but they at least, you know, added some feathers on the raptors, and they tried to make dinosaurs semi-aquatics at the time. They were like, yeah, we definitely think this thing was swimming in water. Mm -hmm. So, and that just, like, made it more, I don't know, but I'm also like a paleo person, so. <laughs> I mean, I feel the, I, I feel the same way. I don't really like Jurassic World. Like, I like Jurassic Park because you know mm -hmm. I can watch it with the context of the time it was made in. Um, Jurassic World, like the at least the first one for me, it's like a dumb fun like popcorn movie I could shut my brain off to. But like Fallen Kingdom was just like, the hell happened here, man? <laughs> you guys could have tried you know? at least. What happened to the Baryonyx, man? Why'd you have to do them dirty like that? You know what I mean? I know. <laughs> so ugly. And it's it's sad too because we'll have kids at the museum, you know, come up and go, 
do you guys have uh, an Indominus Rex or an Indoraptor? <laughs> I'm so sorry. And do I have to be the person to tell you this? But those things don't exist. <laughs> and we have so many cool dinosaurs that do exist. They could have used instead. Mm -hmm. But it makes me sad. And like, it's just a monster movie at that point. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. I mean, you could argue okay. Jurassic Park has always been a monster movie. That is <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean, there's like, oh, it's so much better when you have more of a, a relatable thing like this thing was alive let's put it in modern day i don't know mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> and i feel like it's kind of disrespectful to like the people who've worked so hard to like you know study and research these animals to like depict them incorrectly or like in a way that like turns them into like mindless you know killing machines right like even like you could argue like the Sty stygy moloch right in fallen kingdom is just like you know, they basically gave it a superpower, which is, like, it can destroy concrete walls with its head. Yeah. But, I think, like, personally benefited from those movies is you have more people interested in dinosaurs and prehistoric animals. And I talk a lot about mosasaurs. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to be able to go, oh, yeah, the thing that jumps out of the water meets the shark? That's what we're looking at. Oh, I know what that is. That's fair. Yeah, that's a fair, like, they popularized, you know, more obscure and different dinosaur species, but at the same time, like, yeah, I don't know, it's a double-edged sword, I guess. You know what I am thankful for? So, like, the popularity of, of dinosaurs now, there's so much more dinosaur merch and, like, shirts and stuff that there wasn't when I was growing up so much. Oh, that's true. There's this yeah. one guy I know named Dinosaur. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Dinosaur comics. <Yeah. laughs> no, no, I agree. Yeah, yeah. the amount of merch, yeah. the models, the toys. Like, I have gotten so many different, like, dinosaur toys this, like, past, like, year. And because, like, a lot of companies know that there's a big market for, you know, scientifically accurate, you know, dinosaur toys. And people, you know, people eat that up, right? Like, mm -hmm. I, I simp um the, the company pnso the manufacturer because they do like so many so many super cool um scientifically accurate like dinosaur models let me let me pull one up real quick let me see andy big simp for <laughs> for 100 percent off hell no you never get 100 <laughs> andy big simp would get you zero percent off <laughs> if you're a real if you're a real simp like, okay, so PNSO, I don't know if you've heard of them, Mirio, but they do, like, my favorite figurines. Oh, no. And they're, they've gotten, like, pretty popular the past year. Um, here's their Allosaurus. Uh, let me see if I could pull it up. But, oh my god, why is the co image quality so bad? Allosaurus, How do you PNSO. Spell it? Are they on Insta? Um, let me see. I'm pulling it up on my, on my computer. Um, but it's P-N-S-O, like literally, the, the letters. Oh. Oh, interesting. Yeah, like... There's I, a lot of art, like shared art. Some different art. Oops, that's an old one. Sorry, I'm like struggling to pull this up. But anyway, here's like, here's like, oh. just some of the, here's their models, like if you go and Google. Like here's some of their stuff. Yeah, yeah, their Borealo Pelta is so beautiful. Like, if I had like more dispensable, like you know, dispensable income, I would like just buy their whole stock. I just bought their Pachycephalosaurus. Um, I think that should be in the mail, like maybe sometime this week. But they have just so many beautiful Ooh. models. Yeah, and I'm just scrolling through. Awesome. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sponsored, by the way. I'm not sponsored. But PNSO, if you like, if you like <laughs> yeah. to sponsor me, if you like to sponsor me, I will. I will. I will say whatever you want if you give me more <laughs> figures. <laughs> but yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Do you think like just the advent of like social media and like the internet has made it, you know, possible for paleo paleontology to kind of be in this like really cool like would you say there's like a second golden age almost? I think of like so. popularity? Yeah. Well, I know like just in research in general for paleontology, we are in a golden age 
with the discoveries that we're making right now mm -hmm. with the technology we're able to tell like colors and sometimes colors and we're able to see skin more and we're you know developing better practices and preserving those things mm -hmm. so yeah it's really really cool what is coming out and all the all the spinosaurus papers <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you think about like all the, like the giant theropod like fanboyism that goes on? Well, okay, theropods are really really cool. But yeah, you have definitely. A lot of people... I don't think I would not study or be in that group. I don't think just it's funny too because like within every sort of kind of thing, you've got like kind of stereotypes in paleontology and the theropod people, and then the the ceratopsian people are like super chill. Um, and then yeah. the hadro hadrosaur people are just not there. I'm kidding. There's there's hadrosaur people. I love the hadrosaur um, people. They're the chillest in my opinion. They are. And you have, I think the like the most chill people are the mammal paleontologists. For sure, because they're not fighting over like, okay, here's why <laughs> here's why Smilodon could kick, uh, <laughs> you know, the dire wolf's ass. First of all, like you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. No, theropods are super cool, and like, mad respect to the people who who do that to do theropod stuff. For sure. But, yeah, it's it's a there's a lot of like drama, and not necessarily in in research, but just in general, people who get really really like into theropods that don't do research, and they get like super aggressive with the hypothetical questions. Oh my god! <laughs> like the you know the famous uh, did so and so theropod have lips? And then, you know, yeah. you, you look in the comments, like, okay, first of all, Spinosaurus was in the water both of the time, so Spinosaurus would not, would not have had lips because it would have been in the water like a crocodilian, blah, 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 it doesn't make any sense, you know what I mean? It's like, dude, like, <laughs> <laughs> calm down, eat a, okay. eat a Kit Kat, man, you know, you're hungry, man, eat a Kit Kat, <laughs> eat a Snickers, Miro, yeah, or like, I you know. I guess going back to Sims, um, I don't, I don't know if it's considered a Sim. But you'll have people who just, they have like a fact and they just want to share it. And I get the enthusiasm, but some of the comments are just rude. You know, they're, they're like, well, actually, blah, 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 blah. So if you actually did this, and then it's, you know, wrong. Um. <laughs> yeah, it just, it, it does indeed come off as rude. And especially because, you know, my comics are, you know, informative and like super researched, right? Like I have, you know, of... I work with a lot of people to like get these comics like as close as I can to factually accurate and i'll have comments that just say things that are just flat out wrong like i don't know there was one about like first of all spinosaurus was quadrupedal it's like what that that's been, that, that that like that's been like this disproven since like 2018 or you know <laughs> especially when it comes to like a big theropod yeah yeah and that's a rude one right though is it rude when they're right? I think it. I think it depends on like how they say it. That's true. You can you can be correct and not be rude, like. Yeah, you can go. Hey, like I'm confused. Like you know, I heard this and this came out at this time and it's whatever. Um, or hey, like do you think blah 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 is actually this? Like there's a way. There's ways to do it that's not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was there was one I got. Um, this was a comic I worked on with Scott. And this was Carnotaurus. And we were, you know, I said osteoderms, right? And Scott, you know, he did his research and he said it was okay. And then we got, a, you know, we got a, a, a reply from a student, a, pale, a paleontology student. He gave us, you know, the the resource and said, hey, you know, the Carnotaurus or I guess Abelosaurids did not have osteoderms. They had feature scales, right? And he said it in a very nice way. And I was like, oh, okay, you know what? I will fix that in the comic and then when it gets published on like physical format in the future i will update it to have that you know what i mean and then you have people like here here's why okay this is bs this is why you're wrong you freaking loser i'm like damn whoa dude like bro go outside make some friends man damn why are you gonna come at me like that they're so aggressive with it and it doesn't have to be like that yeah, like go back on go back on reddit man like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think especially like I I don't know why this is like the vibe I get when I look at like, um, psychom posts from you know women like you and Charlotte for example, and it's like there's people in the comments, 
who are like trying to like prove they are like smarter than you or they have yeah. more credibility than you they're not even first of all they're not even in the field and their their name is like something like blue velociraptor 2010 <laughs> you know it's like what are you doing man or they'll just and they re have, and they have what they have what no pictures they have no pictures of themselves i know and then their, yeah. and then and then they say like or they just restate the facts that you put in the description or the post like yeah. for some reason i'm just like bro like are we playing telephone? Like <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> yes, that's correct. So there, there have been like some TikTok. I'm like addicted to TikTok. Okay. Okay. And I run into some that are like, you know, comeback for when you have people trying to, you know, basically restate what you just said. And one of them is, "Wow, thank you for um, repeating what I just said." Or some there's some like good ones. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna save this and use this for when I have a. A weird comment. Do you remember but, one? I'm I'm probably gonna use it. Um, I'll send you. I'll have to send you the TikTok. Okay. I, think I saw it. Today. Yeah, it's just. Yeah, but I also I don't like to be confrontational sometimes. Most of the time, I don't. So I'm just like, ugh, I don't I don't want to deal with this because you're not gonna win. I mean. You know, you know what you're you're right about, or sometimes they are right, and you just I don't know. But I don't respond to that. Really that's well. that's fair. I'm, I'm gonna be super. I'm like gonna get in trouble, you know. <laughs> yeah, especially because like you know, I don't know. I I, I stopped thinking like that. Like I'll, I have a, I have like a very like t I have a tendency to troll sometimes. I <laughs> like. But, like, I'll consider it for, like, a long time. Like, do I troll this person? Like, if they seem like a huge, like, you know, like, like jerk. And, you yeah. know, then I'll troll them. Or I'll playfully troll them. Um, <laughs> Just kind of poke it a little bit. You kind of stir. Yeah, I kind of stir it a little bit. But not, like, not like too seriously. Because, you know, in the end, I just drew a freaking cartoon about a dinosaur. Like, you know, you get, people get upset over, like, the, the dumbest things. There's more things to be upset about. There's people starving in this world. There's people dying. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's like my comic is the least of your worries to be like super angrily passionate about. Like, you know, calm down, sir. But yeah, and I'm sure take you get that. Pill. Yeah, take a chill yeah. pill, man. Thankfully, I've been pretty lucky. I mean, I, honestly, I when I do get those comments, I pretty much scroll past them. Mm -hmm. um, I've been getting those kind of on TikTok. I'll get the same stuff too. So I like I posted a TikTok about. T-Rex and basically a comparison between the Jurassic Park T-Rex and like the chunky most recent T-Rex reconstruction. Yeah, this is, yeah. Just so many comments about the, something about the hands and like everybody was just like, well, actually, well, actually, it's blah, blah, blah. And like, well, actually, it's not. But I didn't, I didn't even bother with that because it's just. I thought Paleo Twitter was bad. <laughs> yeah. Paleo yep. TikTok. Yeah, I don't know. I I guess mainly. Do you think it's a demographic? I feel like TikTok is mainly like really young teens, and you know, teenagers have a propensity to like think they know everything. Like I, when I was a teenager, I thought I knew everything. I thought I was ready to move out and you know become a millionaire, right? But no, I wasn't. Yeah, invincible. Yeah, I thought I thought I was invincible. And you're like also able to have fake accounts too, so it doesn't matter what they say. They're not going to have any repercussions for yeah. you know going after somebody. That's true. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta teach these children. It's the real world out there. <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm glad that like, and this is gonna sound hella nerdy, but like you know, like video games, like I don't know if you've played like fighting games like Super Smash Brothers, but there's always it's like. So bad. It, you know, the, the, you know, you, you got like your your little cousin, right? You haven't seen in a long time, talking mm -hmm. talking mad smack, right? Talking mad smack, like, you know, I could, you know, hey big cousin, I could probably beat you in you know Super Smash Brothers. You know, I'm really good. <laughs> it's like, oh, you're gonna learn today, son. <laughs> yeah. That's me, you know. <laughs> I, I I wish there was a way to do that in Paleo. I guess the only way is like you pull out the paper and be like, look at this published research, son. Oh, you can't read. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Oh my gosh. For real though. For real. For real. But yeah, dang, what time is it? That time flew by like super fast. I am 
we got like about 10 more minutes. I am almost done. If people have questions for Miria, go ahead and put it in the chat. Let's see. King of Death said, For me, when people spread inaccurate stuff, I only ever worry for the people who believe it. Which is true. Yeah. That is rough, too. Because stuff spreads like wildfire. All this misinformation. What are some, like, myths that still exist in Paleo? Or that, like, the um, general public believes? So, I'm still, like, kind of surprised how many people think um, like Dimetrodon and Ichthyosaur, let me just say pterosaurs, um, are dinosaurs. I'm kind of shocked because I, and the feathers too, like I have a lot of people who are surprised to learn that, um, some dinosaurs had feathers. And I, I thought that was just pretty much kind of known now, but I guess if you're not really into paleo or into biology, you don't know that. Or when I say, you know, birds are part of like the theropod branch. And they're technically like part of the dinosaur lineage. You have mm -hmm. people that don't do that. And also, like, I wish, I wish, I, I mean, I grew up learning like the Linnaean system, like mammals, reptiles, birds, like all as separate things. Yeah, but now we're in, um, <laughs> like, cladistics? Yeah, like it's still being taught like that. And it's so hard. Like, I remember trying to learn about, like, just doing phylogenetics and stuff learning about how everything kind of what evolution is like for all these different groups mm -hmm. and it's more like fluid than just just boom 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 and i don't know i'm rambling i don't remember what the question is but i wish we could and maybe it's being taught in some schools but kind of started out with some of the newer thoughts on evolution are mm -hmm. uh, Cause it's so it's so hard to like backtrack and go well let's start all the way at the beginning forget what you know about this about um birds and reptiles being different so i think yeah i guess it has mainly to do with like you know the education system not having been like properly updated i guess yeah and stuff is always changing so i get like it's hard it's hard to stay on top of stuff because science is always we're always learning new stuff and you know disproving and proving things wrong so things are changing but i think like biggest theme like evolution is just not really taught mm -hmm. well at least from my experience in yeah. like early early schooling i mean do you think the texas education system was great at teaching evolution no <laughs> Yeah, so but I'm not even sure what it looks like in other other public schools across the United States. Sir, I like I okay, I grew up in the Philippines, right? And it's ultra conservative country. And my education on evolution wasn't very I guess in depth, if anything. Did they cover cover it at all? They did, but it's like a very like brief thing and it's um I believe it was like Linnaean, but like, you know, there's a lot of like religious stuff too that we were taught yeah. that kind of like bypasses that and obviously we didn't talk about evolution of you know hominids because that's too controversial <laughs> you know yeah this is a bummer it is a bummer because there's a lot of cool stuff um what i education yeah. system <laughs> well is it is it is it really bad? <laughs> I'm assuming Australia, really? yeah. Probably really good. I think I think the um, because Australia is basically the um, American Bible Belt, but but better. Uh, <laughs> what you say with better um, healthcare and stuff. Monkey, yes, return to monkey because that's how it works. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, there's lots of great apes that don't have tails. Or, like, they're shorter. Yeah. Um, yeah. The Bible Belt. Yeah. I know. Yeah. It's sad, too. Like, um, when I volunteered at the Houston Museum, we had a pretty a pretty good um, hominid section and human evolution section. Mm -hmm. And, of course, like, it's super complicated. Like, they have the family tree up. And so, whenever I got to that part of the tour, I definitely had... You know, some visitors, you know, um, being uncomfortable with it, or they just requested to skip it. And for sure, yeah. I think, I think, um, I don't say religion is wrong. It's not bad. 
and definitely it can guide people towards you know li- leading a more positive lifestyle but there definitely needs to be more of a separation between religion and education yes especially because it's weird because even the, even the catholic church fully supports the idea of um like you know evolution you know physics you know because especially in the vatican right and as this is someone who's formerly roman catholic the vatican believes that the way the world works according to science is basically god's way of creating the world so basically god put, laid out these plans for um evolution and speciation and all that stuff to work right same with like the tides physics and it's like part of like the grand mystery of life and i think it's a really cool way to look at like you know yeah. the world right but I, accepting science. Yeah, it's very accepting right and you know the vatican even has like its own like i think astronomy study is like they have like telescopes and stuff too to study you know the, the heavenly bodies outside the world all right but i feel like too, too many people take this extremely literal interpretation especially people who have never read the bible okay because the bible says some some, <laughs> some pretty messed up stuff right that we would never like yeah. you know do today right um i don't know i'm probably going on this i saw prince of egypt again last night that movie slaps yeah. <laughs> that movie slapped so hard i love that movie oh my god it is so good right but even then like i've not seen it i haven't seen it unfortunately what wait it's not disney right it's like dreamworks yeah it's like it? one of dreamworks like first movies or something it came wow. out like mid like early 2000 or like late 90s and it's it's not even like a great a story about faith i'd per se it felt more like i was watching a mythological story about someone who was chosen to lead his people out of slavery and that was wow. like really cool and inspiring and i i don't know i've just been thinking about like my relationship with religion especially as someone who came from a roman catholic background you know like did you have yeah. a religious background growing up at all uh, not really. I mean, I I did go to like Bible camps and stuff like that. And for a period of time, I was pretty religious. Uh, I had a friend pass away when I was thirteen, and so that actually helped me through it a lot. Nay, hey, I'm I'm sorry. But, yeah, condolences. Yeah, it was it was interesting. Um, but I was I really got into like being really faithful and all of that during that time. Mm-hmm. But as I went to college and everything, I'm I wouldn't consider myself religious. But like totally have no problem. Like if you are or whoever it is, like you do you, just don't hurt other people, you know. Yeah, you know. I think faith is a great, you know, it's a great thing to be involved in. And I have no like nothing bad really to say about religion. Yeah. It's you know, it's your it's your thing and mm-hmm. Sometimes I wish I wish I still believed, honestly. <laughs> it's it's hard when you're <laughs> when yeah. you're heavily involved in science and you see the the way the world is right now. At least in, on an environmental yeah. level, it's very depressing. It really is. Sometimes I just yeah, honestly, I wish I still had like some faith because it would help. It would help a lot of stuff. For sure. <laughs> all the thoughts. But hey, you know, we just got to keep striving to make the world a better place um so we're almost oh, damn it i'm so close to finishing this i will send i will post the finished version like it's i'll send so it i'll send it i'll send it to you tomorrow but anyway um one last question skink of death is asking what is your fav- favorite permian creature at the moment hands down the diplocolis that's always been true it is such a cool animal mm-hmm. and i love all the little spots you're adding to him too yeah, yeah i'm trying to make it like you know one is like going to be black with or white with black stri- black dots and then one is going to be black with like white dots then i'll probably oh, yeah then i'll do some like environmental stuff to like you know make it cool cooler <laughs> oh that's awesome <laughs> but yeah that's um awesome. anyway i kind of want to use that like the procreate that seems a lot of fun do you have an ipad I don't know. Okay, yeah, because it's only on iPad. But if you get one, it's only it's ten dollars to download the app. That's maybe I'll have to get one just for the just for the procreate. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, there's a lot more uses to the iPad than that. <laughs> but um, yeah. Anyway, um, I guess we gotta close out now. Um, how can people reach you, Miria? Oh, thank you. I am paleontolo- paleontologica 
on Instagram. And if you want to see any sort of like, I've done some podcasts on my YouTube channel. I have the little link tree uh, link on my Instagram. And that's honestly the easiest way I think to, to see all of that. But I'm pretty like, if you guys have questions or want to chat, like I'm pretty open to all of that. So just don't be a simp. Just don't be a simp. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. So anyway, Maria, thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, I really appreciate it. Anyway, guys, I will be live again on Wednesday and I'll be drawing and chilling. So yeah. Um, next week, I forgot who I have next week. I think I have Evelyn next week. Oh, are you going to do Helicoprion? Maybe. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> I still got to talk to her about that. Anyway, um, thank you, everybody. And uh, have a great night. Bye. Thanks for having me.